Radio Lancashire. Time now for a special programme made by Chris Thornley and myself, Sally Naden. While we were out on our travels for the mid-morning programme, we met a group of Muslim ladies, and they were really keen for us to tell their story about their lives in their words. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu That's basically the call to prayer, and it's said before every prayer in a mosque. The translation is basically calling to prayer. So it's saying, come to prayer, come to success. And it starts off by saying, God is the greatest. For me, it's quite an emotional thing. Uh, it literally calls people together. So it means a lot to me. I Hi, I'm Yasin. I'm 18 years old. And I'm a Muslim living in Lancashire. I'm from a Muslim group called the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community. We're going to go inside now. One of the first things I notice is the rack where everybody puts their shoes. Why do we have to take our shoes off? Uh, so it's basically when we're praying, we often prostrate and put our heads down onto the floor. So, obviously, if you've got shoes in that situation, you don't want things to get dirty, so it's for hygiene. So, it, well, it's just cleanliness thing, though, Yeah, is exactly. It? Yeah. Ah, okay. That's the first myth out of the way. Yeah. Uh, as we walk into the building now, I mean, we're walking into a huge, empty room, uh, but there, the thing that, that takes the eye is the, the centre, and there's the ceiling, the dome in the middle. What's that all about? Yeah, so, if you look closely, there's Arabic writing on, inside the dome. I'll just read it to you. It says... Allah bizikrillahi that ma'inul qulub, and that translates to saying, uh, "Surely the remembrance of God brings peace to the heart and tranquility." To be honest, what does it mean to you then, as, as a young eighteen-year-old teenager, to go into the mosque, to be here where we are today? I think it means a lot. I think uh, it's another part of my life as well. Obviously, not like school and working environments. It's like another aspect to it, if you like. Yeah. Uh, and we've got a whole community and friends here as well. So there is that social aspect as well, and uh, being here is, I don't know, a privilege really. And it's separate, isn't it? For the, the room that we're in at the moment is uh, the room for the men, but there's a completely separate area for the ladies as well. Yeah. And some people might find it a bit odd because in, in a church, for example, people pray together. Mm. Why, why is it important you don't get together like that? Well, again, it's nothing against, you know, men or women in general. Uh, it's just for me... And the whole Muslim community, we find it, you know, easier to concentrate, to, to have all the men together and all the women together. And obviously, you know, they can have sort of common interests and talk to each other uh, about their own things. And I think it's a common Muslim practice to have generally the men and women on separate sides. Mm. Uh, that's not an inequality thing. That's just mainly due to the fact that, you know, you want to be focused rather than... Yeah, I can see yeah. that. I think I'd have taken more in at Sunday school if there hadn't been boys around. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a distraction for me at the time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We have this clock up here, and it basically tells us all the prayer times. So we've got five prayers in one day. Uh, approximately, it's early, early morning, early afternoon, late afternoon, evening, and at night time. Doesn't that get in the way of your life? Uh, not really. I mean, again, it's quite flexible. So whenever you get the time, really, you can just sort of take a day out. Uh, of your schedule. So at school for me, uh, it's either break time or lunch time. I can pray. Uh, and if you're really busy, if you've got an exam or if you're travelling, you can sometimes combine the prayers together for your own convenience. So I don't think it's too much of a distraction. It, it almost it almost feels wrong to ask you this in this building that right. we're in at the moment. But can I just ask you what you think about Donald Trump? Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, I think I can kind of sympathise with him to a certain extent. I think he's recognised that there is a problem with radicalisation. Um, I just think the way he's gone about it and his methods are just completely the wrong way. Um, I think he's, by his, you know, call of a temporary ban in, of Muslims in the United States, he's sort of making Muslims in general, not just the extremists, isolated groups in society, which, you know, it's only going to increase extremism because the whole point of, you know, reducing radicalism is accepting people into society to stop them from resorting to that extremism. So I think like we're doing now, I think we need more openness to sort of raise awareness and to stop people from 
resorting to such extremism because it's due to a lack of acceptance really and I think Donald Trump is only exacerbating that rather than actually helping the issue so I think uh, he lacks the compassion really Hello, hi Yusuf, I'm Sally, nice to meet you. Hi, you too. We went to visit doing? Yasim's family. His mum, Sadia, her husband, David, and his younger brother, Yusuf, who was going to do some cooking for us to share with passers-by on a bookstall in Preston in a bit to build bridges. Sadia, hello, how hi, are you? Hi, Sally, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. What a lovely Wonderful spot. to see you both again. Thank you. Thank oh, you. thank you. This is such a lovely spot here in Preston, isn't it? Hello, David. Hi, oh, Sally, how are you? I'm all right, thank you very much. Good, good. Into your gorgeous kitchen here. This is just so nice. Yeah, it's only a year old. Is it? Uh, yeah, so we've actually been here for a year now, so yeah. we're, we're embedded and settled in. I'm going to talk to you while you cook. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. How old are you? I'm 16. So I'm just taking my GCSEs now. I'm actually in the middle of my exam period. Just had a couple of exams so far. So, you know, studying, keeping the balance, you know. Mm. What are it. you studying? I'm studying, so obviously, English, math, science, all of the regulatory subjects. And then uh, drama, music, RE, obviously, well, it comes from my background, doesn't it? Um, and French and history. What, why drama? Drama, well, I think drama is really good for your confidence. And I think it sort of brings you out as a person. It sort of gives you a lot of, it gives you a variety on life, makes you yeah. look through different perspectives. I think it just makes you generally more of a confident person. I think. What, do, what do you want to do? Oh, <laughs> honestly, I have no idea, really. <laughs> Um, is your mum not badgering you to be a pharmacist? <laughs> um, I did actually do a bit of work experience for her as a pharmacist, so I think there was a bit of influence there. But honestly, I'm just going to do what I enjoy, see where I go from there. P possibly my religious aspect will come into what I do as a living. Um, I can use that, hopefully, as some sort of job. But yeah. see how it goes, really. See All what right comes then. to me. What are we doing now, Sadia? Yeah, what, what are we doing? We're going to make a traditional um, rice dish mm -hmm. and what we're going to do is throw in a load of vegetables and some lentils so then it's an all-in-one dish mm -hmm. um, and it's, going, it's a little bit like biryani um, and actually what we're doing is making a big quantity because we've got the bookstall um, later on and we're going to package the food up and give it out to people as a gift. All right then. Um, so right, you carry on with that. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna talk to your other half. Is that yeah, all right? Yeah. While you start cooking, can I talk to you for a minute? Of course, yeah, no <laughs> problem, Sally. <Seth. laughs> um, David, t tell me a bit about you then, because okay. you know you're obviously not of Asian heritage. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah. I was uh, born and bred in England, uh, raised in Southampton actually originally, um, and my family were uh, Church of England, mm -hmm. although not really practicing. I was christened. Mm -hmm. um, not really practicing. I always had some belief, though, some faith, I think. Um, and so, much, so they didn't take you to church then? No, not, uh. not, not regularly. We did the usual thing, you know, you go for christenings and mm -hmm. weddings and, and funerals, of course, and those sort of things. But no, not regularly on a Sunday or anything like that, no. Um, but I came to Islam, I was introduced to it by somebody who told me all about it. And over a period of time, several years actually, um, as, I, as I learnt more and grew in my understanding, um, I realised it was something that I really wanted to yeah. embrace. What was it then about Islam? Tell us. What was it as, as somebody who come from a Church of England background yes. that, that you yes. really that got to you? Um, I think I saw something in this person who introduced me that, that, that gave me a sense of um, certainty, right. if you like, that this, this was the right path. Somehow, there was something that um, that she could sh that she displayed, that she showed, in the way she spoke, that actually con convinced me that this was something that had to be right. It mm. really had to be. <laughs> I, I, had no, I had no doubts after a while, actually. And this was around the time where you had the Ayatollah Khomeini happening in uh, Iran. You had the um, the Salman Rushdie thing going on. So all of that was happening. And so there was, like it there is now, there, Islam had quite a bad image. Yeah. So I had to really get over that, really. yeah. and initially I didn't want to. I thought, no, no, I'm not interested. That's all about terrorism and goodness knows what else, you know. But after after learning more about it and looking into it, I, I, I began to understand a lot more about Islam. And there's a lot more to Islam than I think most people realise. Right. Well, it's absolutely fascinating. And I'm, I'm wondering what you what your family made of it at the time. Were, were they kind oh, of yes. gone? Yeah. No, they were. Uh, shocked yeah. initially um, 
they were never they were never against it or hostile to it but mm. i think that it took them a long not a long time actually it took them a month or two maybe mm. three or four to sort of absorb it and really take it in and, and think all oh, right he is serious about this mm. um and then they came to really accept it fully and uh you know they understand everything about it now and and this, this is many years ago now so um Was it? They've, they've really I'm accepted it I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. Well, no, how cook how's the cooking going on? How, how are we doing over here? Uh, we've just part of the vegetables, chopped up some tomatoes and celery. Okay. Um, my mum really knows more about this than You're I do. You're ducking out of this, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do? We're going to use a leek. It's not okay. celery, it's a leek. And, um, I know I, the difference between celery no. and a leek. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I use that instead of onions, it's, it's less of a strong smell. So we're just going to throw all that into the pan, okay. um, soak the rice, so we're going yeah. to so soak a qu quantity of rice for half an hour. And I never soak my rice. Is that a just, special rice then? No, it's just tilde basmati. And what that does, it makes the cooking um, that little bit easier, a little bit cooker, uh, quicker, because uh -huh. it softens the rice, that's all. Okay. You don't have to soak it, but you end up needing to cook it for that little bit longer. Uh, you need to get chopping this leek. I think <gasps> <you> <laughs> yeah, chopping this leek, come on. I will. Um, right, back to David. Sorry, David. She introduced okay. me to her. She explained it to me. Dad, you've fallen uh, in love with her. Yeah, she was my first wife. Mm. Yeah, so, um, but not, not uh, that wasn't really what um, brought me into it initially. It was just the interest in, in, in the religion. And then um, gradually, gradually, as I understood more, um, and our relationship grew, if you mm. like, um, then the two things came together, if you like. I mean, we did get married and then I converted. What's converting yeah. like? It's very easy, it's very simple. You just have to make a declaration that you want to become a Muslim um, and that you accept the, uh, the main tenets of the religion. Um, and, and, that, and that is it, really. I mean, then, yeah. This is going to sound ridiculous because I, I know the answer. But especially when you've got so much going on at the moment that's anti-Muslim. Yes. Yes. Have you ever regretted that? No, I've never regretted it. No, no. In fact, there it is... It would be an easier yeah. life. Do you think maybe if you weren't? Uh, yeah, probably, probably. Um, and sometimes when Ramadan's happening and you're fasting, yeah. and everyone around you isn't fasting, then that can be quite difficult, you know. Um, but no, I've never regretted it. Um, and in fact, I've never had any, any any issues from anybody. No one's ever been hostile. No one's ever said a bad word to me. Are people uh, no generally one's... quite surprised when they start to talk to you and you say that you're Muslim. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you get, I, I get that quite often, obviously, because my appearance is just like a, you know, just a, a native white person. So they wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't ever cross your mind necessarily that right. I'm a Muslim. Right. So um, yeah, you do get a lot of surprise. Um, but the, I always get a good reaction, though. I think. And, and the other thing I wanted to ask you, where she got? Should we have taken our shoes off? Or we don't no, have to no, take our shoes off in the house. Right? Um, it's about marrying again because I think yes. people have this idea, don't yes. they, that. Uh, within the Muslim faith, we see, you know, is this a fact that, that women trail behind men, whatever you say goes, and um, you can take as many wives as you like. That was a very funny look you gave each other then. <laughs> that was a look of knowing, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? that was a look of knowing. Um, and, uh, and the idea that you can marry again, divorce and marry again, is something I think that we don't realise you can do. Yes. Um, it's, it's something that is it's, it's it's allowed in Islam. Um, it's, you know, it's provided for. It's something that... Um, is regarded as a last resort, if you like. Right. And you, you do everything to try and save the relationship and the marriage before you, talk, you, know, you go towards divorce. But if you, if you reach the point where it's obvious the marriage can't be saved, then it's allowed. And both, uh, both a man and a woman can initiate it as well. Yusuf, how are you getting on with this now? I'm um, doing all right. No major accidents so far, thankfully. <laughs> Still got all your fingers here. We're yep. chopping up the... The leeks ready yep, to go leek. in the pan. Yep, along with all the fruits and um, red tomatoes, we're just going to make a lovely curry for all the people that we see at the bookstall. Do you do you go to the bookstall with with your mum? Um, yeah, I mean, I usually they're obviously much more experienced than me, you know, um, with all the knowledge aspects of Islam and all that. But I do go along and see how mm. it works. I don't really tend to get involved in the conversation as much. I tend to just look and learn. So then maybe mm. I can do it later on when I do have more knowledge about the subject. So, yeah. So, Yusuf, have you been learning about Islam almost from the cradle? Is it kind of part, big part of your upbringing? Um, I would say it's, um, I think it's a good 
Yeah, definitely. But I think also it's not just religion aspect, it's more of a moral aspect as well. A sort of the big by teaching religion is sort of it's giving me a good moral upbringing as well, how to be a good person because at the end of the day that's what religion boils down to. It's about trying to make people as good people as they possibly can. Mm. So it yeah, it was pretty early on and I, I did um Did you have a it. kick against it? Um No, I'm not <laughs> going. <laughs> Not really, no. I sort of just, I sort of embraced it. I sort of did enjoy it. I just, I did see the good sides of it. My mum always did explain to me how it would, it would make me like the knowledge. You know, there's nothing to lose from having all this knowledge about it. You know, it's not gonna affect you in a negative way at any point. And I do feel it has made me like a better moral person to know all this stuff about my religion because mm -hmm. it sort of just teaches you to be a better person at the end of the day. I mean, as a young man. And we're in your kitchen here and we're making lovely food that we're going to take out. And you've got your whole future ahead of you. Yeah. How do, how do you feel when you see such negative stuff on the telly around your religion that you've taken to your heart from being a baby? Yeah, of course, it is. It is quite disheartening, of course. But, you know, that's uh, you've just got to deal with that at the end of the day and try and spread the message that that's not, you know, the majority of what it is. Like, there is better people that are Muslims. The majority of people are better Muslims than that. Mm. So it, uh, so while it is quite upsetting, it also does motivate you to try and get the word out that it is a much better thing than that and try and do, like, get people to hear about it and stuff like that. We need to put some um, uh, heat under this, yes. don't I'm we? I'm going to just add the oil now. So we've okay. done all the preparation, chopped the leeks, got the vegetables ready, soaking the rice. The oil's going in now with the uh, tomato, um, chopped tomatoes, and then the main ingredient, the ingredients and the spices, mm. that's going to go in. Looking um, forward to that. Yeah. I love my spice. I know she's out on the windows here because the, the smell of the, uh, the the onions and the leeks is spreading throughout the kitchen. And the kitchen's a big part of your it's, life, it's, isn't it? It is the hub. Everything goes on in here. It's the central. And because it's an open plan, we... We cook, we we eat, we um, we sit and watch TV. You'll notice that it's fr it's Friday today, so we've got the um, the weekly sermon on. Um, You'd normally be listening to that, would we, you? We would. If you turn it up a little bit, then um, it, it just happens to be Friday today, and you're here. Uh, mm. But this is a weekly um, address by the worldwide head of the organisation, um, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, and he addresses the millions of Muslims all over the world with this address, and it's basically. Um, uh, guidance on moral conduct, what we need to be doing, what we should be avoiding, mm. um, just to allow us to live in a more peaceful, harmonious way with our community. Um, so that's a real central aspect of an Ahmadi Muslim's life, actually, yeah. uh, the Friday address. I suppose it would be like the Pope would be to a Roman Catholic, isn't it? Yeah, oh. I, 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 would, I would say, yes, I would mm. say it would be uh, comparable to anything else uh, I've, I've come across. Tell, tell me a bit about you, then. Um, you, where, where did you, you grew up in Preston, did you? No, I actually grew up in Manchester. Right. Um, and then I studied in Liverpool. I was there for um, three years to do my degree. And then I moved across to Yorkshire. And then we, I actually lived in um, uh, Somerset for a couple of years. Then I moved up to Preston and I've been here for, wow, probably 15 years. And you've been married before? Yes, I have. I am. Um, I, I have remarried now, so yeah. I have been married before. And we heard from, from your husband, David, about the fact that a woman can actually instigate the divorce process. I think that's the thing a lot of people won't understand from the Muslim religion. I think there is a cultural aspect that the ladies are um, uh, shunned from society if they do get divorced. But actually that's not the faith itself, that's not Islam. Um, the religion itself, um, over 1400 years ago, gave women the right to divorce, the right to vote, the right to inheritance, and actually gave women rights which women are actually have been enjoying just recently in the last 50 years or so. Um, so it's quite amazing that that is the case, but unfortunately it's really misunderstood and it's not, it's not known. So as a Muslim woman, 
Um, although divorce is um, disliked, because obviously it's it's going to impact on the children, it's going to impact on the family. Well, nobody the likes stability, it, do they? If you can avoid it, it's the best at, thing. And but, that's exactly mm. what Islam um, uh, encourages. If there is um, an alternative route to mending the situation, that route should also always be taken first. However, if the lady feels that that is the only option open to her, then um, and that's the route that she wants to take, then that is her right. And from my experience, I wasn't shunned from society. I was supported, I was embraced, I was um, accepted. Mm -hmm. And I think that is um, the true Islam. That is mm. how Islam should treat women because, um, you know, I'm um, a, a divorced woman is no, um, shouldn't be treated any less than any other woman. Yeah. Um, Why do you yeah. think it is that we have this big misunderstanding? And I'm sure it's not just me. I'm sure people mm. listening will now be going, what? I didn't know that either. Um, I think it's partly because um, there is some traditional, traditional, uh, cultural aspects of communities and societies going back to the Asian subcontinent that actually um, do make it very difficult for women and that can then be confused with the religion you know um, in in the Hindu community in the Sikh community um, however that is really really important to separate the culture and the religion right. what about um, the two of you together just come here a minute David um, you stopped cooking. We need to put a heat under it, don't we? <laughs> He's leaving it to you. I'll do that while we're Go on. chatting. Well, yeah. Well, I'm I'm wondering about how people view the two of you. Do you do you ever get uh, you know the look about the two of you being together, being mixed mixed race? I suppose. Um, I think you you'll find nowadays you get. Um, you know, as Muslims, it doesn't matter if you're black, if you're white, if you're Chinese, if you're Asian. Um, the important thing is that you're um, both Muslims. And I think it's probably the same for, you know, mm. two Catholic people getting married, two Jewish people so getting married. Is, is but, race didn't matter, but if you hadn't been a Muslim, that wouldn't, have, that wouldn't have been okay? No, it wouldn't have been okay, because I think marriage is hard enough. And if you're from different religions, it, irrespective of if you're a Muslim or a, a Jew or a Christian or a Hindu or a Sikh, if you then choose two different religions, um, that's fine if you want to do that. However, it makes it even harder for the marriage to work because you're introducing all these differences and potential areas of conflict, especially when you have children. What happened when you saw each other? Did you, have, did you fall in love straight away? Uh, oh, that's she a said good question, no. isn't it? She said no. <laughs> you ask some nice, easy questions, don't yeah. you? Yeah, it was an arranged marriage, yes. so it didn't quite work um, in in the same way um, like that. I mean, so you, did you did you, you eventually went, fall yeah, in love? Oh yes, yes, yeah. It took time, took time, and I think um, we, as we grew to know each other and spend time with each other, then those things developed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, You've got lots of different ways of meeting people, but um, in in Islam, um, because we don't have free courting uh, between men and women, um, and and basically that's because um, a, re a relationship has to be within a marriage. A relationship between yeah. an intimate relationship between two people has to be within a marriage um, and not outside a marriage. So therefore, that dictates the. Um, the community, the, the interaction between men and women. Did did you see pictures of each other? How did it work? And yeah. Yes. yes so it's, it's almost yeah. like internet dating, really, isn't it? In but a yeah, way. There's some, there's some similarities I mean? with yes, that. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. You're allowed to see a picture and um, and and know obviously some information about the other person. Oh, you know, she so. uh, she cooks a bit. She. Uh, yeah. what, what did she <laughs> <you> say? <laughs> Do you know? I, I find it, when she's talking, mm. particularly about. Um, her faith mm. shines, doesn't she? Yeah, oh, absolutely. It, it sort of comes through in what yeah. she says, doesn't it? It just radiates, basically. I yeah. think that, that how strong her faith is and how important it is to her, what it means to her, and um, how it affects everything, every aspect of her life, mm. definitely. David, when you're out as a couple, yeah. do you ever get people look at you strangely? Uh, I think people look with curiosity. I think, and I understand it. I, I think I would as well. If I was in, in their shoes, I would be curious 
what's the story behind that couple, you know, and mm. how did they come together? I think it's a natural human thing to, to, to look. I don't have a problem with it. But obviously people do, do look. But we don't ever get any comments or any bad reaction. I was going to say nothing negative. No, no. And I, I'm actually quite proud about that because I think this, this country has got something to shout about there and the fact that people don't react badly to it. So I think in some countries they might. So I think, you know, I'm quite proud of the fact that my country accepts yeah. that and, um, and, and, and is tolerant and um, open-minded enough to allow these things to, to happen. Well, it's lovely, isn't it? Because so often the, the only bits that we see sometimes in the media, on the telly and that, are the negative sides yes. of things, you know. And just to be with you as, a, as what we, we called you, a, a modern Muslim family yes. here at home. And you are very mo modern, you know, you, you're both divorced, you, you're, you're mixed race, you've got these young teenage lads that are striving off for doing their bit in the world. And yet underpinning all that is this amazing religion. Um, and, and you're not getting any of that negative stuff from anywhere in Lancashire? No, no, not at all. No, I've never experienced anything. In fact, you know, with the neighbours that we live here, they just, it's just like we were the same as them. And yeah. in, in, in most ways, of course, we are. I'm worried about you not stirring this. <laughs> no, it's fine, because there's plenty right? of fluid in there. Is it yeah, all right? Yeah. You're a so, pharmacist, aren't you? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah. I'm a pharmacist. I've um, practised pharmacy for over 20 years now, so I, I love my profession and I, I, I love my job. Lots of different aspects of pharmacy you can go into, lots of different fields, and I'm mm -hmm. fortunate to have probably experienced every field within pharmacy, hospital, mm -hmm. community, GP surgery, what about the, and it's the old question, isn't it, of squaring the science with the, with the belief? Um, I, I don't, you know, I've heard this a number of times, but I don't think there's any contradiction between um, science and my faith at all. I feel that um, they go hand in hand. Um, and again, I think it's misconceptions because, um, you know, you, you think if you go back to the original um, explanations and the understandings um, of the actual faith, you will see that they go hand in hand with science because as a human being I don't think I would be able to accept a faith that contradicted the world and the, the world around us because that would go against your common sense and, and the logic that humans need. Uh, so, so I, I don't, I don't see religion and science contradicting each other. I see them as complementing each other and going hand in hand. Come here, you. <laughs> um, as a young man now, mm -hmm. um, growing up in, in, you know, with uh, your beliefs yeah. as, as a Muslim, mm -hmm. does that ever get in the way of things you might want to do? Um, well, I think as a Muslim, well, obviously not because you, you know, you follow the Quran, but I think living in Western culture and Western society, there is, you do see sort of things, I'd call them like distractions from like your actual faith. I think you do... Girls. Yeah, and, you know, going out drinking. Drinking, yeah. yeah. all of that thing, party lifestyle. That's like, tough, isn't it? Not, well... It, it depends, like, if you really wanted to do that deep down, then it would be tough, but I follow my religion, like, and I think I'd be much ha happier and better off not doing them things. I mean, you know, you do get people trying to convince you to do it, but at the end of the day, you, you, I've got my rest of my life ahead of me, and I've got, you know, I'm 16, I'm nowhere near through my life, and I do kind of feel like, you know, I've still got so much more ahead of me to do different things. Mm. So I just kind of feel, you know, as you're younger, you should probably stick to the straight and narrow. So because this time of life is really important, you know, you've got GCSEs, A levels, all of that. So. I can hear your mum through you. <laughs> I can hear Sadie go. This time is is really important for you. But she she makes really good points though. I'm, I, I'm I'm sure she just wants the best for me. I'm going to throw a curved ball in here now. Donald Trump. What do you make of him? Uh, it's a bit of a wacko, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> a wacko. <laughs> no. That's a good word for him. Yeah. As we continued making the rice to hand out in Preston Market, I asked Sadia if she felt her life was very different to mine. No, I think the majority of our lives will have a, a huge amount of overlap. You know, the social aspects friends family you know cooking shopping bringing up children 
it being so important that you bring your children up well, that's not just a Muslim thing, that's for any human being. So I think the majority of our lives will be overlapping, but there will be aspects of your life, I don't know, maybe 10... A Friday 20, night glass of wine. Yep. So 10, 20% of your life may be different to my life, may be different to the next person's life, but the majority actually, because I, I'm, I'm a work, I've worked, I, I work uh, with people of all different walks of life, and we have far more in common through humanity than we, well, than we do our differences. I'll have a cup of tea, please, then. Thank you. Tea, tea, tea. Tea, tea, tea. Can you see how that's... Mm. So what can you put in there, then? So what I've put in is um, salt. Oops, mm. let's open this up, I'll tell you. Garam masala. Oh, I've got some of that in my cupboard. Yeah. Garam masala. Um, I've red never chili, used it. Red chili. Red right. chili. I've put a little bit of seasoning. Put um, some ginger and garlic in. And then threw it, threw it all in there. Oh, Actually, what I might do smells is gorgeous. put a little bit of ground coriander in. But maybe I might, I just need to taste it, make sure it's mm -hmm. not too strong. You know how you pronounce my name? Yes. It's all right now, but it's actually Sardia. Sardia? I've been, I've been meaning to, you know like Nadia in Britain's Bake Off, yeah. Nadia, it's exactly the same but with an S, Sardia. Well, Sardia! <laughs> I've got it. Sardia, thank you very much. I've been meaning to talk to you. I've been meaning to tell her. I was doing an interview then. Oh, were you in the middle? I've been meaning to tell her since Blackburn. All the, and, uh, what just am I saying then? Sardia. 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 We think little fish. <laughs> Sardia. I've had all sorts. Sardia. Sardia. Right, I've got it in my head. Nadia. Sardia. Sardia. Thank you very much. No problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David. We've seen things recently uh, where our soldiers have, have been the focal point of um, some really nasty abuse mm. in the name of Islam, haven't yes. we? Yes. Flags burnt, poppies trodden on. Yes. How do you feel as a British citizen when you see that? Oh, well, it would make me angry like uh, anybody else, I think, because they're not, they're not behaving as, in my opinion, they're not behaving as Muslims should behave. And one of the biggest things in Islam is respect. You know, you've got to respect other people. And they're not showing respect in those in those behaviours, in my opinion. So um, it's wrong. It's wrong, and I th it, it makes me angry. And um, I think I'd probably not be alone in that reaction amongst most Muslims, actually, to and that sort of, of behaviour. One of the things we haven't talked about is the radicalisation of young people. Mm -hmm. Do you ever see any of that? Um, not here in Lancashire, no. But you see it obviously on the news a lot. Thankfully, I've not bumped into. It. Well, maybe not thankfully, because I wish I could talk to them, try and talk some sense into them, see possibly why they resort to such things. And I do, I do. Do you have a kind of funny inkling of how people end up in that situation? You know, because a lot of teenagers go through a period in their life when they're looking for something, don't yeah, they? Of course. You know, and it, it, there's a void, and if the, that wrong person comes up at the wrong time and fills yeah. that void you can almost see how that could happen couldn't yeah, you? yeah well i get i suppose so but i think it's more to do with like the negativity like you get you know the hostility between people's home countries in the uk the country that they're living in so i think if they're influenced by the wrong crowd and at the wrong point in their life possibly when they're feeling quite low mm -hmm. and they're willing to latch on to something that can give them a feeling of purpose like and then i do i do i can understand why they would do it but you know it's just a completely wrong way to go about it you know what that it's not going to solve anything at all mm. there was a big call wasn't there sardia for mums to actually watch their kids. Do you remember all that on the telly? It's where people have been asked to, you know, mothers to almost unite and keep an eye on what your young people are doing. Yeah, I think it's the responsibility of everybody, really, but particularly the parents um, and the siblings. Um, and, and it's essential for parents to have really good communication with their children and if they teach them the true Islam which we've been talking about then radicalization uh, wouldn't happen and I think a lot of these people well what I what I heard recently which really um, really uh, uh, stuck with me was that um, these people who 
pick on vulnerable teenagers um, to become suicide bombers. They don't get their own children to become suicide bombers. It's always other people's 15, 16, 17 year old children they uh, manipulate to become suicide bombers. Um, yeah, and I think um, there was recently I read um, there was a journalist that infiltrated ISIS and he came out and said, I could not see any Islam within ISIS. All I saw were young, um, manipulated, misguided, lost um, uh, young people. We packed up the cooked rice while it was still hot and headed for Preston Flag Market, where Sadia and David proceeded to set up a stall to hand out free food and chat to complete strangers just to try and build bridges within their community. Are you religious in any I'm way? I'm not, not atheist. <laughs> are you? Yes. Do I you am. have a view of what Muslims are like? Yeah, everyone, like, like the lady said herself, uh, it's all peace and harmony. Yeah, I understand all that, but um, I don't follow anything myself. Right. Yeah. Do you ever think you get influenced by what you see on the telly when you see Muslims no, on the I've telly? No, I've got my own opinion on everything, definitely. I make my own, my own views and my own judgement and everything like that myself. I don't know what Amadeus Muslim actually is, whether that's yeah. a branch of them yes, or Yes, it is. Or it's what. a sect yes. of um, So, I don't Islam, know. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, yes. I, I agree with that. You should respect everybody. Exactly. That's the end of it. Anyway, yeah. I have to go because I've got an appointment. Can, oh, I, can I give you um, a box of rice because I've just made it this morning? <laughs> Would you like some? It's very nice. I've Obviously. tasted it. <laughs> it, it, it. And she's giving them away. And it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. What else can we do? Because you've got such a negative campaign on negative things being portrayed about Islam. Um, so if it wasn't so for that, you wouldn't feel the need to have to preach about your beliefs then? I think you you still would, I, I, it, but maybe there would not be such a dire need for it. But there is such a dire need for it today, because there needs to be a balance of what's portrayed. And as any Muslim in this in the UK will feel, the frustration, um, the the frustration of. Um, hearing negative things on the newspapers, on the TV, and not being able to rectify it. And mm. I bet, you know, like me, they want to scream out and say, that's not true. You know, my, our, our faith is being hijacked. So other than this, you know, writing articles, writing blogs, going on Twitter, um, telling people what the true message of Islam is, it really feels like a duty that we need to do that. Is there a recruiting element out of today where you're trying to draw people into the Ahmadiyya Muslim sect? In our objective is to let people know the true message of Islam, which is love and harmony. If in the process people are attracted, then that's their free choice um, and we will support anybody who is attractive attracted but our ultimate objective is just to communicate the true message that's mm. the ultimate what kind of response do you get on the flag market here I mean, it's fairly busy at the moment people wandering across people looking at you a bit strangely one or two you, one box of food has, has gone already um, do you ever end up feeling fearful um, no because I'm always here with my husband um, and I wouldn't do it without the, it, my husband being here. Um, not really, no. I think we live in a wonderful society and community. You often see um, people from different faiths giving out leaflets and talking about their different faiths. And I think that's, what the, that, that's a wonderful thing about this country, that we are able to do this. Um, and, I've got to be honest, yeah. I often give them a wide berth. Yeah. Do you, do you know well, what I mean? Maybe, maybe now you'll just give them a little bit more time because they might be giving you a free tub of food. Yeah. <laughs> we'll think about it slightly differently than, than, I, than I would do yeah. uh, before I met you and talked to you and, and, and David about what, what you're doing here today. I yeah. think you deserve some rice. Are you hungry? <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm all right. Run a, run run a, a diet. diet. All right. <laughs> well, I, I teach um, English as a foreign language, um, and I teach mainly Muslims at the moment. You know, it's, it's all different people, but there's a lot of Muslims, and they they see ISIS and all of those people has nothing to do with them. Um, and when it, when it, when it's come up, they've got very upset and said, that it's not us. It's not that's not Islam. 
it's not Islam, it's not Islam, and they get quite upset about it because they you know, we, they get tired with that rush. Like last week, I took some of my students to um, the shopping centre for um, a vocabulary lesson. We'd, we'd learned about jobs and work, so we were wandering around saying, you know, what's, what's the name of that job that that's, that person's doing? We actually had a security guard following us because they were in for hijab, um, two of them, and the security guard was following us. Because you know, obviously terrorists are going to stand in the open and point and where you know. So what's the answer? Do you yeah. think? I mean, how how do we help build those bridges to make sure that that doesn't happen? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I really, really don't. I mean, this kind of thing helps. Would you like some rice? I made it this morning. No, it's vegetables and chickpeas. I want them. Yeah, it's it's very tasty. We've tried, tried it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. One of our students had a guy um, in the St George's shopping centre the other day. He put, he went, put his fingers up like a gun and went bang, bang, bang at her, purely because of how she was dressed, you know. And they've, they've, these girls have come from Saudi Arabia where they're closeted and protected, and she's never experienced anything like that in her whole life. You know, it's horrible. The next day, Sadia David and their eldest son Yasim took us to meet friends of theirs in Preston. Hello, hello. Hello. Hi. Thank Thank you for inviting me to your home. Tell me who you are. Yeah, my name is Malik. Um, I'm the um, tenant of this home. <laughs> and I'm very well welcome to you to come over here. It's, it's, it's very nice to see you over here. Thank you very much, Malik. Coming into the kitchen now, which is massive. We've met before, haven't we? How lovely to see you. Uh, hello, Sally. Um, my name is uh, Amtil Karim. And I'm um, wife of Mr. Malik. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and these are, these are your beautiful children. Introduce me to your girls uh, and your boy. They can introduce themselves. Oh, uh, they can. My, he's my son. <laughs> Who His are you? His name is Hamza. Hamza um, I'm Hamza Malik. How old are you? I'm 12. Okay, so we're sat around the big table here in your kitchen, which is laid out for tea and all sorts of things, and the books are here. Now, lots of children... Uh, listening to this at home on a Saturday, we'd be thinking, what? <laughs> Classes on a Saturday? But I've been at school all week. Yeah. Why is this important? What is it you're doing around the table with your children today? Actually, I am uh, running a class, not only for my daughters, uh, for the other girls of my community. It's called Nasrat class. Tell me who you are. Zainab. How old are you? Seven. I'm Mahin. And I'm 10 years old. I'm Sana, and I'm 10 years old. Malik, while, while the girls are learning, just want to talk to you a little bit about um, being a modern Muslim and misconceptions maybe that people might have who are listening now. We're in your lovely kitchen, uh, we're here in Preston, and but there are still people, aren't there, who... who Think very differently yeah, about exactly. Muslims. Um, um, some, some very few people. There are very few people are uh, making the negative impact of Islam. So it's not basically Islam. Islam is a very modern religion, you know. So and and the basics uh, and the theme, base essence of Islam is love for all and hatred for none. <laughs> Oh, wait, can I can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. Look, you're reading your book here, but this isn't in English, is it? No. What what language is it? Urdu. Urdu. Arabic. Arabic. Yeah. Can you understand all these figures on here? Uh, kind of. Kind of. So you're having to, as well as do your ordinary studies, you're learning another language. At the moment in time, we've got the children sat around the table yeah. with the um, Quran in Arabic here, and you're, you've got your iPad in front yeah. of you. What you. This really does bring it into the 21st century, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing with this now? Uh, actually, um, uh, we have a WhatsApp group. In a what, sorry? WhatsApp group. A WhatsApp group. Oh, what's oh, yeah. right, on. <laughs> of all the Preston members. So we share the Friday sermon summary in English and Urdu with each other. So I have the points in my uh, iPad or phone. <laughs> so uh, bringing two worlds together, really. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And this is what we call we can call integration. You know, yeah. this yeah. is the main important point. There was a, a program, wasn't there, on the television that talked about the fact that 
there is an integration yeah. in this part of the of the country. Um, but do you feel that that's a, a, a misrepresentation? Yeah, exactly. This is very much interpretation because uh, uh, misinterpretation, misinterpretation, because uh, Muslims are very much part of this society. You know, when I, when I came in this world, in this uh, country, I came two and a half years back over here. So suddenly I offered myself for um, for a volunteer in a British Red Cross. So just 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 to become a uh, important Shaitan member of this society Shaitan just to, yeah, to just yeah, 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 just just for the integration just for having interaction with, with the british people and uh, and i hard work that over there and the, in this in this response they offered me because they, they selected me on those people who attend the 150th ceremony in buckingham palace no yeah did you go? Uh, just, yeah, yeah. just moving away a little bit class is getting a bit loud <laughs> yeah and i got the opportunity she's obviously getting very excited there. yeah exactly i got the opportunity to meet the royal family and i've got the uh, very good i'm in mean, the chat with the, with prince charles you did so, yeah, he asked me he asked me where are you from i told him that i'm from Pakistan. He said, yeah, I have already visited Pakistan and I went to Peshawar. So I said that Peshawar is, is one of the city of Pakistan. So I told him I, that I belong to from the Ahmadiyya Jamaat, we believe from Why did you come here? What made you, what brought you here to this country? Why did you leave Pakistan? Uh, well, it's, it's a long story, you know, in Pakistan, there, as already I told you, there are some people who are dominating the society, you know, they are religious extremist people. So they, they are, especially they are targeting uh, on Ahmadi. Ahmadi is that because in Ahmadi this is, this is your particular yeah because you know Ahmadi Ahmadi says that we are against for the fighting jihad so that's why they are against they are against to us and they they creating a lot of problem for Ahmadi so I was enjoying over like my life over there I was working as a project coordinator and my wife was was a teacher a school teacher over there that's so, why she's so good at this yeah. Okay, this is the, this is in Arabic and this is written by Hazrat Promised Messiah Salam, to praise the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Okay, can, um, did you, Malik? Why, after every time they mention the Holy Prophet, do they say, peace be upon him? Because we don't say peace be upon him just for the Muhammad, Holy okay. Prophet Muhammad. We, we say these, these words after the name of every Prophet. You know, the Moses, when, you, when, when, when we uh, mention about the Moses, we say, Alayhi Salaam. When we mention about the Jesus, we say, Alayhi Salaam. When we mention about Muhammad, because these are, these are the Prophets, these are the rep representatives of the God. They deserve some kind of respect. Looking at your household here with your three girls and your one boy, who's in charge? <laughs> <laughs> here you can see, uh, well, in charge is me, uh, but overall, but here you can say that th th that's what we have presented to the, to my wife, the house rules, the mom is the boss, and the second rule will go for the rule number one. <laughs> <laughs> so the mom rules the house. <laughs> mom is ruled by her husband. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's because of she's a very nice lady. <laughs> Yes, because we have, we have, we have, we have <laughs> equal rights, and uh, we respect each other. And uh, most of the time, most of the, I mean, ninety percent of the time, I obey my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. ninety-nine percent, I obey. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all goes with, with the love, you know. You have to create love between you. You have to create a fun in your family. Because in this society, uh, it's very much important that you have to interaction with your children, with your family, to, so that they, they will not involve in, 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 the, in the bad things, yeah, you know? So One of the things I wanted to ask the girls about, yeah. why are you looking, what are you looking at there? That's like, that's a fish tank, so it's a goldfish bowl. We have a made garden. a small garden. In a goldfish bowl? Because, yeah. <laughs> because I, in the class, we usually do a lot of other activities as well. Okay. So, this is I did with my daughters, and uh, I give them some other fun activities, so they enjoy doing stuff. And uh, can we talk, um, where is she? Sadia. 
Am I saying that right now? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about wearing the scarf and the veil. Yeah. Because I think that's yes. another misconception yeah. that, that we have. Um, it's just, it's interesting you, you mentioned that because not so long ago, just a couple of weeks ago actually, I was um, in a clinic, a blood clinic, just for a routine blood test and I was sat in the clinic with three other women and it was just the four of us, we were the last four there. Two were Muslim and two were nuns and I had my headscarf on and um, for as, as a, one of the Muslim women and the other Muslim woman had a full face covering on and then one of the nuns had her head covering on to cover all her hair and the other nun had her head covering on to cover only part of her hair and I just felt what an incredible situation there's four women of faith here all dressed modestly and there was a thread of commonality going through all four of us. Yeah. And I really wanted to take a selfie. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the nuns looked really strict. So I thought, I better not. <laughs> one of the things that has come up time and time again in the recordings that we've done, in the making of this programme, with you all, has been the media. So that's David. Go on. I think some parts of the media, I, I don't think we can talk about all parts of the media uh, in this regard, but some parts of the media pander to people's prejudice. Some of the tabloid newspapers, what they do is they, they, they know that people have a certain view, and so they just reinforce that as much as they can with some of the headlines, and I think they need to stop doing that. Um, something that's so important within our faith um, is that there is no compulsion in religion. That's what Islam teaches. There's no compulsion in anything. Um, and if that incredibly important component was uh, published within the media, then I think the, um, the, the, the fear that people have, there's no, there's no need to fear Islam. Um, it's about love and harmony and living um, in uh, peace within one's community. We are all brothers and sisters. We are all part of the same family of humanity. And that's what we need to remember, Muslim or not Muslim. I just, I just hope that people will think a little bit more 